Hi Fabric Jugglers, it's Babs here from Fiery Phoenix and this video is the long awaited, much requested shearing tutorial. It covers standard shearing and also waffle shearing which gives you uh, a square pattern within the actual shearing of the fabric which is, is very very simple but actually looks very impressive and complicated to create. This is a collaboration between myself and Chelsea from So Darn Neat. Uh, she runs an awesome blog um, all about um, different tutorials and sewing techniques. She's also uh, quite an active member of the Starting to Sew group on Facebook. So I'll put the link to her blog in the description below. So go along, check it out, have a look and um, and have a good look around the blog and see what else she's got. It's um, it's, it's quite impressive, all sorts of tutorials for, for beginner sewers. Um, with all of that said, let's get on and uh, start the shearing. And today, my fabric jugglers, we will be taking you on a trip down shearing lane. So we will be using some shearing elastic to create both waffle shearing and plain shearing. So we'll be creating a nice traditional shearing that you're probably very familiar with seeing and also this checker or square shearing. So I hope you'll stick around and um, you can see how easy it is to create such a, a funky little effect with, with just a slightly different type of, um, of thread in your bobbin. Here we have our shearing elastic. I'll put a link in the description box below to, um, to purchase it online if you can't manage to find it elsewhere. And what we need to do is manually wind the bobbin. If you try and do this um, using your sewing machine to do it automatically, then the tension will be horrendous. And you need a slight pull. You don't want to pull it out really strongly. You need there to be some slight tension, but not too much. And it won't take too long to wind this bobbin. Um, I'm not going to wind too much into it because this is just... A demonstration as against me shearing an entire garment and um, it is very very simple and very very quick to uh, to wind that bobbin so once you've wound the bobbin I'll try and find my scissors in. once you've wound the bobbin I tend to snip off the long loose ends that I started with and then snip a nice length so that I can feed that through so you load the bobbin as you would any other. If you have a top loader, obviously you would load it through the top of your sewing machine. Now I'm using this in conjunction with a red thread so that you can see quite clearly what I'm doing. Um, and you may also need to adjust the tension of your bobbin holder, not the actual bobbin itself. Um, so that you'll need to experiment with. There is a tutorial on how to do that, uh, which I'll put in the description box below. Now we'll just bring through the bobbin thread, as you would any other thread, through to the top, and then we can look at beginning to sew. Now shearing is another technique which is very, very straightforward and simple to do, which for some reason really intimidates people. You have a, an elastic in your bobbin thread, you have a standard thread in your top thread, and the key thing that you must remember when sewing is to always sew from the top of your fabric. Um, otherwise you will end up with the elastic on the surface of your fabric and that's not what you want to see. So you take a fairly long stitch. You can experiment with different length stitches. The shorter the stitch, the tighter the um, the tighter the the gather. Uh, I've gone for a, a three and a half at the moment, and we shall just do a straight stitch and sew through. So as you sew, it is just as you would sew a normal any normal st stitching. And what I tend to do when I come to the end, you can see that already, already there is a, a gather starting to, to occur. What I do is I loosen it up slightly, 
rotate the fabric so that it's not all going to twist in one direction and then sew back in the opposite direction. Now depending on how tightly you want your, your gathers to be, you can either mark lines or you can just run along the previous line of stitching that you had, which is what I'm going to be doing. And you just sew back down the other direction. When you come to the end, loosen it up somewhat, turn around and return in the other direction. I'll do this another two or three times so that we've got a run of about five or six and then you can see the gather effect. So here you can see the effect with just four runs of um, shearing and on the reverse, I turn that around, you can see the um, the elastic is is caught with the general stitches across the top and that's what holds it in place. So it's the tension of the elastic that then brings back the, um, the gather into the fabric. Now what you can do is take this one step further and after you've sheared, after you've sheared horizontally, you can then shear vertically to create what's called a waffle shearing. So um, bear with me and I will show you how to do that. So previously we were shearing in this direction and now we're going to be shearing in this direction. So we're now sewing 90 degrees to our original shearing lines and this is what will give us that waffle cloth effect. So here you can see we now have instead of just a plain one directional shearing we have a checker pattern which is probably clearer to see on the reverse which gives us a much tighter um, waffle cloth effect. Um, so if we have a look at the reverse we have the, the plain shearing And then over this side, we have that checkerboard effect, which gives us that really nice tight waffle shearing. Well, I hope this has been of some help to you. And if it has, please give the video a big thumbs up. Uh, share it around, have a look at what else is on the channel. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.